When is the last time we could say it's good to be a Knowles fan? Well, this week we're going to say it, and you can feel good about it, and it's justified, folks. Five commits recently. We're going to run them down here on Florida State Seminoles Live for a 113th edition. And you know it's special when we got Nate Greer coming in here from Noel Game Day. You know it's special. Nah. From the top, Jason Parker, NBC6. Of course, Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day as well. And again, Nate joins us to cover recruiting. Boys, how are we doing today? Doing good. Now, for the viewers at home, they may be asking why we are recording this on a Monday night. And there's two reasons. There's two big reasons for that. Number one, we know the viewers missed me so much after not being here last week, and we didn't want the viewers to have to wait all the way until Wednesday to see this beautiful face again. That's number one. Number two, for those of you who live in the Tallahassee area who've heard Logan screaming his brains out over Florida State getting five, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five verbal commitments in the 2022 class in the last four days. We did not want Logan to have to hold back two more days. We wanted Logan to be able to to shout from the rooftop, rooftops how, how, how great it is right now to be a Florida State 7 Logan, real quick question before we jump into it. Have you started the petition to change the name of the stadium to Mike Norvell Stadium yet? Uh, we're going to wait on that one. I think I'm once, once that class gets up from number three to number one, yeah. we'll start starting that petition and we'll get uh, yeah. a, a whole thing going in from our Discord, Jason. Oh, and, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be getting there. The, uh, we'll cool. grow that cool. army. Cool. Cool. Sure. <laughs> and Tavius Woody is the 11th rated interior offensive lineman in the country, 12th rated in the state of Alabama, Lafayette, Alabama, that is. Number 244 overall, Nate. What can you tell us about him? Well, first, you know, uh, you know, the, the thing about Woody is that, you know, he's a two-way lineman. So, you know, he's an interior lineman and he can also play D-line. Um, he really showed out back in April um, at a rivals camp that kind of showed him on, on the national scene as a, as a legitimate defensive line uh, target while also being rated as, you know, he, he, he's a guard. In college, if he plays on offense, um, you know, I like him on defense. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are comparing him with Timmy Jernigan. I don't know if I want to go that far yet, but he's super violent. And, and he moves extremely well for a guy that's that big. And I, there's, there's a common theme with all five of these commitments that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about probably is that they play with a, a nasty, nasty mean streak. So he plays really pissed off. Um you know, he, he is a big, big body. He's college ready. Um, you know, I think you take him, one, because he's a jumbo athlete. You can't take enough big kids that can move. And also, it's kind of like a, a you know, a nace in the hole because as they continue to push for the offensive line, you guys have, you have like Armella still out there. You have Pritchett still out there. You have Jalen Early still out there. So, you know, if they land these kids that, you know, they may possibly get, they can, you know, move Woody over to defense. And I think that's a, a, a big W for FSU. But, um, you know, he he committed to Florida State, you know, so many people may wonder, you know, about Alabama, Auburn. Uh, you know, he, he chose them over Auburn. So uh, I'm not sure Alabama, you know, exactly what their involvement is with him. But it's a, it's a guy that Atkins and, and Coach Novell have jumped on. Um been on him for a while and you know the the, the visit showed what kind of they had to offer you know what, what they have proven that they had to offer so uh, i i love that take i like him as a defensive tackle i think as a d tackle um i think he would be a top 150 player um i, I do think he's underrated as a recruit period i think you know i think he's a 150 player Period, but I, I like him a ton at, 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 D, at D tackle. Nate, you talked a little bit. First of all, Nate, congratulations for getting a Wi Fi fix from your last appearance. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You know, that. Could, come a long way. It's like you, you, know? you know, once you do a Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football show, you actually get your Wi Fi. It's not like that Logan Robinson, you know, dial up AOL stuff over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I get it. It's fine. Now, yeah. Now that we stepped up here, but you talk about how you'd like to see him a defensive tackle. Where do you right now? You know, he comes in 2022 class, first game against Duquesne, first game on the roster. Where, 
if you're a betting man, is he on the offensive line or is he on the defensive line? Where do you legitimately see him right now? Um, I see him on defense. I'll be honest with you. I think that um, Florida State is looking to sign six or seven offensive linemen. Um, I think that a legitimate possibilities on three to four that are left on the board. Uh, and I just think that in college is going to be a better, better D tackle. I think that's where he plays. I, I think that's where, where he ends up at Florida state. Mm-hmm. He's got some, we, you already talking about a name, but he's so damn physical and he likes to finish mm-hmm. off the plays. I think the second whistle is what he goes for. Yes. I highly suggest people go watch his film because when I was going our instant reaction video earlier today and kind of got to sit down and watch a majority of the film, it goes to show most of these plays are as an offensive lineman, they're being, they're ending through the, through the sideline. The, the chain mm-hmm. gang is more in trouble than uh, the defensive lineman that he's, that he's blocking. So th- these, these kind of guys that Florida State is after and will continue to go over them, they have some physical nature to them that we, you know, that's what Florida State's all about. That's something that FSU fans mm-hmm. want. That They want that back. It's kind of been lost. And mm-hmm. right now, just looking at the high school tapes for these cats, it's promising. Yeah, you talk a lot about on the Unconquered Talk podcast the last two years mm-hmm. about how this team is kind of mentally soft. In the last few classes, and the guys like, these five that committed, they choose violence every time they, they step on the football field. And Florida State really hasn't had a lot of that lately. And, and it's getting back to those old Florida State teams and guys that are, are going out there to, to put their, their opponent in the dirt. And they're, they're going to play to the old Bowden macho of, to the echo of the whistle. So uh, I, I love Woody. I, I like him as a target. I've liked him for a while. Um, I'm excited about that take. Is there something worried? Like there was something about Nate. You probably know more on this, but is grades kind of a concern for him? Because I've seen a lot of FSU Twitter <laughs> tweeting that you know they're hoping that he gets in. Is that something that keep um, an eye on at least for him? If Malachi Wideman can make it into college, anyone can. He's, <laughs> well, he's well. Well, he's kind of that. looking for a new home. But well, he made it into Tennessee. So yeah, he, he made, it in there. made it into college. So if Malachi Wyman can make it into college, anyone can. Logan, I have a quick question for you. Are you offended personally? Because we know the man crush you have on Timmy Jernigan. You've yeah. got it before your absolute man crush on Timmy Jernigan. Are you offended at the criticism of people comparing to your, your man crush? No, I, I was the one that tweeted a little bit today that just from – and I or maybe it was on the uh, – no, I, I tweeted it and I also said in the YouTube video that – just from the nastiness, the way that he likes to continue plays, be a bully is that kind of personality trait that I see in the play style from Woody. Can't really get to the tier that Timmy Jernigan is. He's going to have to take a lot more steps, but just give me that kind of nasty energy uh, as an offensive lineman or, de- mm-hmm. offens- or defensive lineman. Uh, I, I'll take that any day of the week. But wait, there's more recruits. Florida State also got four more commits. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and a guy that we know is going to play D-line, Travion Williams out of Crystal Springs, Mississippi, 6'5", 254, according to the uh, 247 uh, platform here. National 280 recruit in the composite, 38 at his position, number 16 in the Magnolia State, Nate. So – Florida State fans need to go on, and if you haven't watched his highlight tape, you need to go on and just watch this kid. He plays quarterback in, co- in high school. He plays inside linebacker, plays outside linebacker. He's even played defensive back in sub packages. <laughs> um, you know, he is a big kid that moves really well. So, you know, these are the kids that Florida State hasn't been able to land. You know, the, the college ready, come in ready as a freshman, Physically, not maxed out, but physically dominating as a high school kid. And and, and you watch him, again, kind of the same thing as Woody, super violent. Um, I I think he's pretty advanced for a guy with his hand usage. Uh, And that's something about Bishop Thomas, too, we'll get to, is that a lot of these kids that play D-line in high school um, aren't really good with the use of hands and and, – they need to be coached up a lot there, but you can tell he's coached up really well. 
and and he uses his hands and his length. He's got really long arms. He knows how to how to create space off of the offensive lineman. So uh, again, another one I'm super excited. He came to the elite camp for for Florida State, and he just dominated that camp. And from that moment on, um, you know, Florida State became the favorite. Uh, um, you know, they were talking to him a little bit before that camp. Um, you know, one thing that Norvell and we I think we talked about it here a little bit is his ability to evaluate. He does a really good job there, and you know they kind of saw him on some film and invited him to that camp. And, and, you know, he showed everything that he, he sh- showed on the film. So, I mean, six, five, two fifty. you know, Florida state hasn't had that in a, in a, in a while. And, you know, he's an explosive guy who can move really well. So another great get. Mm-mm. No, you haven't had that kind of size coming right out of high school and sitting at that defensive end. Uh, just the kind of special athlete he gets offered early in June. Mm-hmm. This kind of came out of, I wouldn't say like out of nowhere, nowhere, but it kind of was just a, it I think he made nowhere. his decision right there, like yeah. saying, hey, this is it. I'm just going to go ahead and seal it up right now. You also had Jerry Jones, who's been a big recruiter for FSU, who's current uh, defensive back, and he's been working a lot. I mean, also with uh, quarterback, 2023 quarterback, uh, Chris Parsons, Mm-hmm. who's also a very talented cat. Jerry and Jones has been doing a lot of stuff, helping out this staff, definitely in the Mississippi area. And, you know, it was cool to see the video whenever he did commit in front of everybody that was there on that official visit um, dinner that they were at. And, you know, Jerry and Jones is back there behind him, you know, celebrating and all happy. So, uh, you know, th- it's going to show that, you know, Norvell is also using his own abilities and his staffs, but, you know, making sure that, you know, these little kind of, intricacies and connections like a Jerry and Jones can come in and help a lot from, you know, going back to Jerry and Willis, who we might talk about later, you know, Gaynor was the number one guy. He hosted Jerry and Willis that whole entire week. And that's a guy that you want to have. That's an alpha guy on FSU's team. You know, he, he represents Florida state very well. He's, you know, grew up here in Tallahassee. Amari Gaynor's all over him the whole weekend. And it seems like things are heading in the right direction for them to get him back from Georgia tech. So uh, just looking at Norvell and what he's trying to do. Nate, in different quick, kind of ways. Nate, quick question of you before we go on and talk about the rest of the class. One of my areas of concerns when I look at this class right now is that out of the 14 quote-unquote hard commitments, only seven are from the state of Florida. And out of the five since Friday, only one of them is from the state of Florida, from the Orlando area. Does that concern you at all? Do you think, you know, and, and we talked about this last time, last time I was on the show two weeks ago, that, I, you know, you know, I, South Florida area, Orlando area, Tampa area, that's the primo recruiting in my opinion, do, would you like to see Norvell and the staff go back to focus on recruiting the state of Florida? Or do you think right now that's more of a fact of just being honest, we're number three out of the big dogs at this point? Um, I, I don't know if they're number three anymore. Uh, just a perception. I think they've done a good job over the past three to five months. Um, but you know, I, I think you look at Georgia. I think you look at South Georgia. Um, should always be a hotbed for Florida State. Mm-hmm. So Sap is from South Georgia. Charlton's from South Georgia. Um, you know, Woody's from South Alabama, I believe. Uh, it's still a region that you you want to hit and, and go after. And Mississippi, you know, has, I think, been vastly underrated for the last 10 to 15 years in terms of, of players that come out of that state. Um, I, I am a big fan of, of Florida recruiting. But when you look at all, at the offensive line, it's not a it's not a phenomenal year in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, when you look at defensive line, um, other than a couple, you know, I think five to eight guys, it's not a great year at defensive line, especially in the interior for mm-hmm. for the class nationally. Uh, when you look at DB, uh, you know, you have you have Travis Hunter committed; he's originally from Florida. You have Sam McCall, who's from Florida. Mm-hmm. So you had those still athletes that you really are trying to target. Um, it's not a great year for wide receiver in the state of Florida. So I, I think it's situational, but I do always I, I am in that that boat that you gotta hit Florida first and then go to Georgia, Carolina, Louisiana, you know, start in the south and then work your way up. But I'm I'm not mad at it right now. I think that, you know, in, in the state of Florida they they are working hard on guys like like Glover, um, you know Marvin Jones Jr. You, you look at those those kind of guys, and you look at twenty twenty three. They really are hitting South Florida really hard, um, but 
you know, I, I think this year in Florida, it's not a great year in certain spots that they have to hit uh, home runs in, and that's offensive line is number one. Before we tear through the rest of the commitment list uh, from the last week, which uh, includes five, uh, let's make our way through the live chat to pick off some of these questions. So mm-hmm. Kevin's asking about uh, a top 10 rated uh, center guard in Jalen Early out of Duncansville, Texas, who the 247 crystal ball is pointing toward FSU, Nate. Um, in, in due time. I think that I think that one was wrapped up this weekend. Also, I think him and Powers are wrapped up this weekend. I think that uh, he's supposed to make an announcement here in a couple of weeks. I think that he'll be uh, choosing Florida State. Uh, I, I made a prediction in our Discord for him. Uh, you know, for for me, I, I want to see if they'll be able to hold on to him because I still think he will probably take visits. You know, Ohio State's a big part of his recruitment. I'd be interested to see what happens with Ohio State and Penn State, but. I do think that Florida State does get his commitment when he makes his decision here in a couple of weeks. Over the weekend, uh, FSU did get a commit from Georgia, and that was uh, Quashon Sapp, offensive tackle, 6'5", 320 already. Top 350 recruit, 35th rated at his position, 32nd rated in the state of Georgia, Nate. Uh, the thing about Sapp is that he has a lot of versatility. Uh, he can play all three positions, but at, at FSU, uh, I think he's a center or guard. I don't think he's a he's a tackle in college. I don't think his arms are long enough. I don't think that his, his athleticism is enough to play tackle in college. I think he's an interior guy. Um, but with that said, I think that you know he's a big body again that is learning to play center this year in order to offer more versatility in college. So he's going to these. Uh, Rivals camps, Nike camps, uh, big man camps, you know, going in there playing a position that he's never played before at center. Um, And I know some people have been a little bit down on him because he's struggled a little bit in some of these camps, but he's learning a brand new position. Center is one of the hardest spots to play in football, period. I would would put it in the top two to three in in terms of, you know, importance and it being a hard spot. So Responsibilities, yeah. Yep. And and then you look at him as, as a guard where, I like him at, you know, again, you can't take enough big body kids that um, overall have that move well, that can, this guy can play all three positions. He can play tackle um, if you need it. But I I think when you look long-term success, he's definitely an interior lineman. Sap was supposed to commit on uh, next Saturday Mm -hmm. uh, or this upcoming, this upcoming uh, Saturday before July 4th. He says, screw it. We're going to make it happen now. And yep. so he just goes ahead and, and I think a lot of that energy, I was wondering that too. When Sap, we talked, I don't remember where I was talking about it or who I was doing it with. I think it was with, uh, it was with you. And we talked mm-hmm. about it when Trevion Williams came in and I said, I wonder mm-hmm. if this kind of energy, this kind of vibe that's going on around in Tallahassee right now, we'll just go ahead and say, Sap will go ahead and steal the deal. And sure enough, he, he seals it up and Florida state grabs another four-star offensive lineman. And that just kind of, just kept on going on with the, the mm-hmm. trend there for FSU able to grab these big boys. Yeah. I mean, he's been committed for a while. Like you said, you know, he admitted that he's been a silent for three months. Yeah. Uh, you know, Florida did make a little bit of a push, but you know, Florida state held on there. Danny's having a good time in Gainesville. Totally doing great. TikToks. Maybe he should, <laughs> uh, he's doing too many TikToks. Still had a better record than we did last year. I hate him, but he's still had a better record than we did. So, Calm also, down. also had the same coaching staff. Also had the same mm-hmm. exact coaching staff. Calm, calm down, calm well, down. Well, well, once, once the balance is even back out, and, and Florida State gets a hurt out of their ass, um, you know, Flor- Flor- Florida has not done a great job recruiting, and they've missed their window uh, uh, of taking over the state of Florida. Um, Mullen is one of the top coaches in the country, but his inability to recruit as a whole is what's going to keep him from being. A national championship coach, in my opinion. Oh, Nate, you are one hundred percent correct. I agree with you one hundred percent. It's more for the uh, person currently underneath me here, who's uh, <laughs> who, who who believes that we're hoisting the uh, the championship trophy right now with a recruiting class. So I, I never say that. You just make that up in your brain and tell it to people that are on here on YouTube. You just put that I out pre- there. I preach the truth. You you make the up truth. You make the up truth. Lie, put it on Twitter. You get death threats in my DM. 
Well, that's worth it for content. Well, okay. I'll do anything for content. Yeah, you will. Jason has spoken the truth other than the 74 times that I've had to correct him on, <laughs> on the truth. Other than that. Well, and the 72 times you're correcting me was wrong. But go ahead. Continue. Continue, Mark Rogers. To be the All one. right. <laughs> Bishop Thomas, defensive lineman, 6'2", 301. Uh, Top 500 prospects at 467, 73 to hit his position. Number 68 in the state of Florida out of Orlando. Nate. Finally. Yeah, there it is. There it is. You, you got, you got your, a Central Florida target. Um, you know, think about Bishop Thomas first. You know, um, you know he's six two, three hundred. Um, I, I think that you know he's probably done in terms of, of growth wise, like length wise. Um, but he moves again really well for his size. You know, he's got a really good, you know, get off at the snap. You know, he's really violent as a football player. Um, and he uses his hands really well. And I, I think that's what's going to help him come, even though, you know, he's a three-star. I think that's something that's going to help him transition to college easier is he can tell he's coached up. And you can tell that he takes coaching. Um, just the way that when you watch him, all, yeah, it's a highlight tape. and But you just watch what he does. Um, I, I really like his ability to use his hands. And, and, and the fact that he's missing a front tooth, tells me that he he's a worker <laughs> you know I, I i love that you know yeah you know but that tells me that he's just he's down for it you know i i, 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 I like that kid you know and it's in a year where d tackle is not great you have um a couple guys in florida who are ready to, ahead of him nationally but you know he's one of the best uh, interior defense alignment in, in the state of Florida, and they're able to get him. So it, it's another good get. And finally, Odell's on the board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Had to get him off the boat. Yeah. It was definitely a heavy offensive line, defensive line uh, mm -hmm. move this past week. Uh, and we rounded out with uh, Kanaya Charlton, offensive lineman, 6'5", 3, 5, 1. Back to Georgia for him. Uh, yeah, back to Georgia. Did you watch our offensive line last season, Mark? That's why. That's where this comes from. He's down to about 320 now, I believe. Oh, 330. Wow. No, wow. no, 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 no. That's, what, like, he, that's what he told Dustin. He's like 335, probably, which is perfect. Th that's one thing that you – know, he's not he's, – he wasn't a, a sloppy 350. He's like just a big kid, and – you know, if have you have you guys watched his, his highlight film yet? Yeah, uh, he he's also in the realm not as much I would say of Woody, but he's also in the realm of just kind of flinging kids off of him. Yeah, no, you would like, like if, his, his his nickname for me for him now is to be IHOP because of, of all the pancakes. Like he physically mm -hmm. is dominating kids, and he comes from again a a good program in, in, in Brunswick. Um, I think he got to clean up his body a little bit, mm -hmm. but for at three fifty, if you watch him, he moves really well. Again, again, a theme here with all these guys, big body kids that move really well, and, and I, I think that he's probably he's not a project like some of the offensive linemen that Florida State's landed recently. But he's probably a year or two out um, to to be a guy that contributes for for major minutes. But again, uh, you know, you look at guard. I'll take him any day, 6'5", 330, 340, that wants to phys physically dominate you, and, and that's what this offensive line needs. So an another guy that Florida State not noticed really early, um, you know, he kind of entertained Georgia Tech a little bit, but he came to Florida State so much and was working with FSU so much that it, it, it was going to happen sooner rather than later. Nate, I know that I'm going to ask this question. Logan's going to consider me either. He's going to call me the Debbie Downer for asking this question, but it has to be asked. Yeah. Out of the five commitments that we got, do you legitimately right now believe that all five, come December, come early signing period, will all still sign with FSU? Or do you think there are a couple of them, one or two, that that may, may at least interest, get interest from other schools still, and may eventually defect? Uh, these five, I would 
Um, I think the only one that I would have a, a concern of, and, and I'm, I'm not really concerned about it right now, would be Bishop Thomas. And, and, and that's some things maybe off the field or some stuff off the field that he's got to clean up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but I think all these guys out of this group stays committed. I think that it, a Jalen Early would be someone to watch if he does decide to jump on, on the boat. Um, you know, there's always going to be decommitments. It, it just happens that every program, n not every kid is going to, that FSU has right now is going to be in the class. There's going to be some sort of decommitment. These five, I would, I, I would probably put Bishop Thomas one, Woody two, uh, maybe, maybe because of the grade issue. The other three, I think are locked and loaded. Not really worried about those three. Logan, I'll give you a chance to also answer that question as well. Do you agree with Nate that that these five come to Florida State, or at least four of them, at least four of them stay committed to Florida State out of these five? Mm, I'd say four out of five. Four out of five. D Nate has closer contact and with these guys than I do, so I would just stick with what he says and what I read in the Discord. And uh, go off of what he says in there, but I, I feel optimistic. I, I do too. Sap, Sap, I think is one that is going to turn into a big time bell cow. Um, mm -hmm. With these five, I mean, you look at also Low Ball, who obviously committed before these guys, but you know, you've got an offensive line now that is going to start recruiting, and you know, it's going to help too in that in that QB room going into the twenty three class and moving forward. So We've got close to 100 on the line here at the Voice of College Football with uh, Jason Parker, NBC6, Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day, Nate Greer, our special guest tonight. He's just one of the boys now. He's been here twice now, not necessarily a special guest. Nate Greer joins us on a regular basis to break down recruiting so, for so FSU. And uh, keep in mind that if uh, you want to <laughs> find college football content, of course, you come to me, Florida State. Join these boys on Noel Game Day. They are tearing it up. So please join them, whether that be on YouTube or just go to NoelGameDay.com. The one thing I will say, Nate, is this an accurate statement that the number three current ranking is, is something to be excited about, but at the same time, much of that has to do with 14 commits being a large, pretty large number compared to everybody else right now. Excuse us, Nate. Excuse us, Nate. Before you answer that question, Mark, not all of us work for Noel Game Day. <laughs> I said Jason Parker, NBC okay. six. Can I get a little love for my coverage, please? Yes, I'm nurse. <laughs> please, just a little. The good. hockey coverage has been great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, Nate, go ahead. Amazing <laughs> hockey coverage. Yes. yes. <laughs> great job for a sport that doesn't belong in Florida. Um, uh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, anyways, no, I, I, that's definitely true. Um, this class will not be a, a top three class um, just because, you know, they have 14 kids already, you know, it, you know, that's a, that's a really solid amount and it's going to continue to be like that as you move forward with the early signing day now. Um, but you have to get excited about the direction in the, in the guys that Florida State had on campus. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's very, very okay to be excited about having the number, number three class at this time. I think last year they were, high 20s, low 30s. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the highest, you know, per person, you know, average they've had since 2018. So, you know, it, it, it's it's a lot of momentum. And for a team that was, you know, three and six last year, you know, you kind of have to be excited about the direction. And, you know, I think any Florida State fan with any common sense knows that it has to happen on the field mm -hmm. in order to keep this momentum going. But when you look at what's left on the board – for Florida State, there's a lot of high-hanging high fruit left. That this class has a really good shot at being a top ten class, which uh, would be really big for the direction of the program moving forward. So um, you did say you did say three and six, right, uh, Nate? Yeah. Just want to make sure because Jason he Thank never you. brings that up. Never, I, I've never never brings up three and six. Yeah. I never hear that out of him. So I, I forgot what their record was last year. I have yeah. never mentioned that we had more than wins this past season. Never. I have never said that at all. Yeah. So, hey, quick question for you. You talk about that a little bit about what's next. So so who are the next 
you've mentioned a couple of them so far, but who yeah. are the next recruits in the next couple of weeks that could be announcing their commitment to Florida State? Uh, Jalen Early, uh, Jarrell Powers, um, you know, tied in out of Texas. He was on, on campus this weekend. Uh, he made it known that his decision is coming soon. Uh, Early and Powers are both from Texas, and they're um, not a package deal, but they are friends. And then I, I'm watching Jerron Willis, uh, you know, the Georgia Tech commitment that he, he's teammates with uh, Kushan Sapp. Uh, Florida State has been after him for a while. Um, I, I think he's one of the best uh, linebackers in the country. Uh, I don't know or understand why Georgia Tech has been able to sell him playing safety at 6'4", 220. Um, you know, at some point when he realizes he's a linebacker, I think you know that will ease his mind in, in making that switch. Uh, I, I don't think that's going to happen here soon, but from what I've heard and what we talked about in the Discord and talked about between us at, in our text messaging is that there's a lot of positive vibes coming off of him. But, you know, J- July should be a- another solid month. Um, the, the, it's, we, we are in the dead period now, so we'll, we'll see what happens on who makes their way when that's lifted. But you know, I, I think that Travion Williams was, was a little bit of a surprise. I think Antavis Woody could be a little bit of a surprise for some who don't really follow recruiting that much. So I, I think, you know, I, I'm going to name a name that people are going to be like, oh, you know, hell no. Um, what about what, – what, so you have Damari Austin, the, the, the running back, who I think is going to make a decision. I think you have Jalen Glover who is um, going to make, I think, those two are going to be first come, first serve on the other running back in this class. And then you had um, Bowie, who just, his first name is escaping me right now, but he just decommitted from Georgia about three weeks ago. He's super tight with a ton of the recruits that FSU has, and he has a great relationship. He's a five-star, top 25 kid in the class. Dayon De- Bowie or Smoot Bowie is his nickname. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you want to talk about him. We haven't talked about him yet. And, and, you know, supposedly he's given Florida State a very, very um, hard look. And and that is a legitimate possibility that he joins up and joins his friends as possibly a Florida State commitment, which would blow the roof off uh, of the summer for FSU. Nate, I'm going to need you to never say the word discord again, please. Okay. Well, well, I I will say that in, in the discord, um, in March, uh, I did have a, I did have a <laughs> Saps uh, prediction b- way back on March eighth. So there's a and few that you had back in March. Yeah. But yeah. you know that was, in the, that was, in, that the was in the Discord. Yeah, but in you know the Discord. Okay. But you know what you didn't have? And sorry, Logan, that we're three minutes late. You didn't have Logan telling you why you should hit the like button. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We're not still on Bill here. I thought this was pretty interesting. No, we've yeah. hit, the, hit the point. We're late. We're running late here. We got, we got time here. We got, I need you to tell people. The people, the people that are here now want to hear about a top tier running back that could possibly pick Florida State because that's what a lot of question marks that I've seen in the last week. Even though you know people complain twenty four seven about offensive line, defensive line, and now mm-hmm. we got to complain about something else. There's always got to be something else to complain about in Florida State. <laughs> Doesn't have a running back committed here. Where you know well, they Florida do. State's or well, yeah Hill, but you know. Other than that, building more depth there, yeah. what are they going to do? And that's pretty interesting. You're a little – Get, people what, get a running back commit? You Possibly. Know, no, you know what would happen. If you hit the like button, a running back will commit. <laughs> if you hit the like button, we will do good on this episode. But Jason's ruining some some top-tier clippage here. Um, well, but cool. uh, hit the like button. Blame, blame the Jew. I see how it's going to be. <laughs> the Jew above me wants you to hit that like button. I do. And hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell right there so you get notified every time there's a new episode that we drop weekly. We're doing it early this time. We're doing it early. Jason's got bingo to go to on Wednesday night at 6. So okay. we're doing this early this week. And, you know, it, per- it, worked, it worked out perfect, Jason. Just admit it. You got bingo at, at 6. And... Uh, we get to come on here and do early recruiting coverage. At least at Bingo, they actually give us prizes that were promised. How's that wristband going? Did you promise? Oh, you uh, we 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 that's now being looked at by Gucci and Louis Vuitton, and we're we're having some talks. It's plastic. Let's calm down there for a second. A lot of things are plastic, and they get sold for millions and millions of dollars. This is true. Mm-hmm. Does it matter if I take a moment to make fun of one of our rivals for a second? 
your weekly let, let, thing. Let me let me take care yeah. of, of a little business here. Oh, let's yeah. let's get to a couple super chats here. We got uh, TFJ Boxing. Appreciate that super sticker. Thank you so much for chiming in there, TFJ Boxing. Appreciate that. We also have uh, New King God. Ooh. Nate, what's your prediction on this year's Miami Florida State game? I love these people that lo want predictions like eight months in advance oh, of yeah. games oh. that are going to be like eight games deep in the season. But anyway, so, hey, Nate, Nate, Nate New King a, God, anyone, anytime you want to throw me five bucks, we hey, can give hey. you predictions. Last year, you had a, yeah. as much energy as you did. Da, 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 mm -hmm. Whatever. Nate, I'll admit, Nate, you did go hard for paying with your prediction last year. You, you went strong. Yeah, my, my, my prediction was 82 to zero. Yeah, <laughs> little, and, little, and little, little. So let, let me preface that I will never, ever, 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 ever pick Florida State to lose to Miami or Florida. In my heart of hearts, I, I'll, I'll know it, but I'll never publicly can never really say it. It hurts me to say it, but if you wanted my earlier prediction of, of Florida State Miami this year, I think that um, Miami is putting putting a lot of. Uh, um, hope into a, a, a quarterback that's coming off a, a significant knee injury. Um, they have question marks at wide receiver. Um, they lose their best two tight ends. Uh, their defensive line has been completely ransacked by poor recruiting and NFL guys. They lose a ton at linebacker, and their secondary is garbage. Um, so I, I think that Miami has a little bit of dose of reality this year. Um, yeah, they had a good recruiting class last year. They can uh, thank COVID-19 for that. Um, if COVID-19 wasn't a thing, a lot of those kids would have went out of state. But, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go as hard as last year, 82 to nothing. I do, you know, early prediction-wise, I, I do think that, you know, Florida State will beat Miami this year. Um, just the fact that I think Miami takes a step back. I think that, um, you know, I'm not sold on Manny Diaz as a coach. Uh, I think that he, he, him as a recruiter – is I think we've seen the plateau, and I, I I just I'm not I'm not a fan of their backup quarterback situation. You can't put a lot of faith in a guy coming off a major knee injury. Same thing with with McKenzie Milton. We don't know yet until we see live game action. But I'm gonna say like 55 to three, Florida State. <laughs> oh, oh. Defense takes a bounce back like yeah. no other, like we've never seen before. So make sure to send your hate DMs to that man right there in the lower level <laughs> of your day career from the whole game day, please. I think they're still going to come to you, Jason. Oh, yeah, definitely. What no, definitely. You're still going to get like 80%, probably 90% of them, but maybe 10% so, so, won't trickle. So, to I mean, I, I, I do think that, you know, you know, I'll joke on the side that, you know, that, that's got to be a statement game. For Florida State, they can't lose 52 to 10. Um, that's a game that they have to win for perception wise. Uh, and I, I just, I, I think that Miami, I under, underestimated them a little bit last year. Um, I thought Rhett, Rhett last year would struggle a little bit more than he did. But, you know, they, they, lose, they, lose, they lose a lot of talent, especially on defense. So, you know, I think Miami gets a little bit of a slap in the face of, of what really is, is reality this year. It's funny we talk about Miami because uh, while we're on the show, they just lost a wide receiver commit with Quan Lee uh, mm. and predictions well, that he's well, going to go to well, UCF. Oh, so they're losing well, to UCF. Got it. Okay, cool. Uh, well, they, they, they lost him. Um, you know, a Miami fan will tell you that they decided to uh, uh, drop him from the class, which is complete trash. <laughs> <laughs> that's their go-to now that's kind of been their mm. thing well they're kind of still trying to fight for air down there and what right. are they, like top fifth top 55 uh, bottom 55 i don't know where they're at and and speaking of miami i have a little message for the miami fan base after this mm. last week to the miami fans who were so upset because recruit marvin jones jr the son of legendary former Florida State linebacker Marvin Jones decided to do the same thing I do every time I pass by a U tag at work or a U person at work and throw the U down. And they got so upset because how dare he do that? I have one message to all our Miami viewers watching right now. Come on. Come on close to the computer. Shut the hell up. You're the same fan base that told me and told FSU fans when Al Blades Jr., 
arguably from the from one of the greatest families to play for the University of Miami, the Blades family, when he came up and disrespected and threw the U up in our field while taking a visit inside Doe Campbell Stadium at Bygone Field, threw the U up on our Seminole head, and I was told by Miami fans, don't blow it up. It's no big deal. He was just having fun. Marvin Jones Jr. was just having fun. Don't be upset that he's not going to Miami. Don't be upset that he came to your paradise camp last week, took your free Adidas crap that hopefully he'll throw in the trash somewhere between Coral Gables and Plantation, where he lives. Just admit it. Your recruiting class sucks. Admit it. Marvin Jones Jr. isn't coming to your class. Admit it. He will be a knoll schooling your canes. Just face reality. Accept it. We still love you. No, no, actually we don't. But we still respect you. No, no, no. Actually, we don't. <laughs> so, so do do it with me, it, it, Logan. If you want to throw it up with me, Mark, you're more than welcome to do it too. If you want to throw it down, with <laughs> you I'll throw it down, Logan. I'll connect yours. I'll connect mine. Oh, yours. There we go. Here you go. Oh. Up right there. There, there we go. go. There you go. A little bit closer. There we go. Yeah. That's perfect. Nice. That was perfect. Magic. <laughs> I have no incentive to do that. Plus, I know where my bread's buttered, so we, we don't need to be offending fan bases here at the Voice of College Football. So I will only do that when I need to to deliver the truth. We do have a question coming in for Nate. Nate, glad you could make it back. I thought I would have to suspend this question for like next week or something. But Willie no, Carter, I, I appreciate your car. super chat. Mm. Willie, Willie, thank you so much for your super chat contribution here. Asking. Uh, who is on the Florida State board at running back and wide receiver? Uh-oh. Really? That's good. That's good, man. Well, I can. Apparently say nobody's on the board. No, we, we got to hope. It's tough, tough in the uh, car there. I'm surprised he was driving. He's using that old game day Wi-Fi now. So. Uh, no, I, they got to fund him with some better Wi-Fi in that car. Uh-oh, he's coming back. Nate, Nate, you with us? Logan, why don't you jump in? Then Nate will jump in. Yeah, I would I'm say. Before, go ahead. You can turn the video off, Nate. There you go. Live uh, video. Well, I'll note on here real quick. I think at the top of the board uh, is wide receiver Kevin Coleman. He's a big time target that Florida State is after. Um, and you kind of look at also. Nate just texted me, so he'll be back in just a second. Uh, you also look at Jaleel uh, Skinner, too, who's you know at a tight end, but he also, right now, Florida State is kind of letting him come in as a wide receiver. That's obviously a guy that Florida State is big time after. He really has enjoyed his visit, visits. Looking at a guy right now, Travis Hunter is on my screen. He's been a big time recruiter for FSU and Jaleel Skinner alone, along with AJ Duffy. AJ Duffy has a very close relationship with a, uh, with um, Skinner. So uh, FSU is working all the angles there to land this cat. Uh, he's rated as the number one tight end in his class. Uh, but then going back to Kevin Coleman at wide receiver as a true, true wide receiver, he, he also has that connection with A.J. Duffy. Those guys are close. He also was uh, close with uh, or friends with Nico Markel, who was a previous FSU commit. Um, and so Florida State has that kind of connection with Coleman. That is a five-star wide receiver. And, you know, I think a lot of this is going to have to – they're going to have to see how the play goes on the field, mainly and the concern for Kevin Coleman. I think FSU has done a very good job there on the wide receiver front. Um, and then running back, I think Nate mentioned it just a little bit ago, but, you know, Glover is one to keep an eye on. And, he, you know, he's trending towards FSU. He's made numerous visits to Florida State. Um, and so I, I'd keep an eye on Glover. And then the name that Nate was talking about, if there's some kind of, you know, nugget trails to that, that would be pretty interesting to say the least because of his connections with FSU. I forget the name that he had that he shared with us. Completely forgot. It's lost my mind. Something buoy at the end uh that'd be that'd be huge if, if you're a betting man logan and you know you're a betting person the odds that kevin coleman chooses florida state out of st louis area odds that he says i'm going to come from st louis to florida state all right i think right now fsu 
I wouldn't say as a leader leader, but I think it's trending towards Florida State more than some people think. There was a lot of interesting things that Nico once when he was coming to FSU, he was telling us uh, he, you know, he's really it's in between going to be, I think, Florida State and Alabama for all of this, definitely for him. Uh, I mean, it really, they, I think Florida State is just in a really good spot for Coleman. I think, I think it's more leaning towards Florida State than Alabama right now. If Florida State has a pretty solid season next year, starts off the season strong. I, I think for, that's a guy that Florida State can can bring grab and i know nate can talk about this too because he's had a lot of interconnections with kevin coleman yeah nate nate if you're a betting man the question i asked yep. Logan, if you're a betting man, does, what are the chances for state's able to get kevin coleman to come in from st louis to commit to what say so so what what are my odds so so like if i were a betting i don't bet i don't gamble if i, if I were a betting man I, yeah. I, I, I would take my i would take six months of my yearly salary and put it Florida State landing him. Uh, I, I I think that him being at, at Midnight Madness right when that period was over, he mm-hmm. was in Tallahassee. Um, I think that um, that says a lot. Florida State has been at the top of his recruitment for a while. Uh, he's a he's a Florida State fan. He idolizes Peter Warwick. Uh, I, I just think that even he even though he's from. St. Louis, and that's not really a regional area for FSU. I think that FSU, I agree with Logan, is firmly um, planted as the number one team for, for Coleman. And I think they land him um, with the caveat being unless they completely lay an egg and go like 2-10 two and eight, two and ten this year. Then that blows up the whole recruiting class. And then who knows what happens then. But he is I think arguably... that, that Coleman is locked and loaded. Yep, arguably the best wide receiver in the nation. So I know that yes. you've watched tape, Nate, for sure. Logan, you probably yes. have. Who do you guys compare him to? He's that good. Um, I compare him to uh, a bigger Deshaun Jackson. He's not mm. the biggest kid. He's 5'11", 175, uh, which is right around what um, Deshaun Jackson is. But he he reminds me a little bit of him. Um which I think would be a hell of a gift for FSU. So, but uh, someone asked earlier uh, a kid that I visited this past weekend that Florida State starting to really push for is Antoine Green from Virginia. Uh, I, I think that he's a kid that Florida State's going to continue to push for. And I think you know Florida State will look at him as a possible wide receiver for the class. They have Mortimer committed. Mortimer is your your slot for the class. You know, Mortimer is, is a track guy too. He's a sub 11, you know, 10, eight, 10, seven guy in the hundred, um, runs really clean routes, really good at catching the ball. Perfect, perfect guy of what you need for, um, the slot. And he also set the record for Dade County for, um, special teams, punt and kick return. So he's also dangerous with the ball in his hand. So I'll, I'll take him. Just keep recruiting South Florida. That's all I'm saying. Keep yes. South Florida. Yep. I, I, I know Mark kind of snickered the last time I said it, but, you know, three-star kids out of South Florida are just as good as four or five-star kids across the country. I'm, just, I'm telling you. It's a different breed down there. See, see, Mark Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, you you scoffed at me when I've said it, and now it's two to one. Just come over. <laughs> come, come over to the 305, the 954, the 407, the 561, the Eagle. <sighs> 941-850-904. Discussion for another day, I guess. Uh. Now, two weeks ago, well, 12 days ago, you guys scoffed at me with my oh. take that I thought was a hot take. You guys scoffed at the, the degrees of the hot take. What, did you pick Alabama to win the national championship no, that, that, Georgia, that week? That I picked Georgia to be smart out. Okay, yeah. So. so I'm going to continue with another in the top 10 hot takes before the 2021 season. Uh, uh, I better hold on to my seat. You should. Because the last one, no, you've got to make up for that. Because that Georgia that was... Clemson was a very hot take. No. Big deal if that happened. 
it, it's a toss up. Be a huge deal. Georgia beating Clemson would be. It's a, a toss up. Huge deal. So, Jason also picked Tennessee to win the SEC East last year. That was a hot take. Nate also picked Florida State to win 82 and nothing over Miami. So let's calm down. We've all made stupid predictions. Logan, we, we can't even count the number of stupid predictions. Logan is. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> my, my, mine is out of jest. I would never pick Tennessee to win anything under Jamie Pruitt. I used to drink a lot. I've, I've moved on anyway. Hard. <laughs> so. Florida State in the first 13 – this is Florida State's 30th season in the ACC coming up in 2021. In the first 13 seasons in the ACC, there were no divisions. Florida State dominated. 13 yes. seasons, 11 ACC titles, two second-place finishes. Since then, Florida State has not finished higher than third since the 2016 season. They have started to go down, to, down on the downhill slide. But that changes this year as Florida State will – Finished third in the ACC Atlantic this season. Give me my Charles Barkley guarantee button. Mm. Guaranteed. <laughs> Florida State finishes. I think Clemson wins the Atlantic. I think Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football's favorite coach, Dave Doran in <laughs> State, finishes second. <laughs> and I think Florida State ends up tied with Wake Forest, but I think Florida State beats Wake Forest, and we'll go through the schedule as the season goes on. But I think Florida State finishes the season third in the ACC Atlantic. I believe I've got three separate videos on this channel bashing Dave Doran and his 40% winning percentage in the uh, ACC. That's all, uh, that's all I you have. That, I think that's a pretty high take on Wake Forest. I think I think the hot take is more Wake Forest finishing really? second. Yeah, I, I think they... No, no. No, Wake Forest finishes fourth, I think. Okay. I think Who's second? NC State. Oh, oh, oh okay. NC State. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, you know, man, that guy is one of the biggest douchebags in college football. Oh. I, I, I hope nothing but the worst for, for Dave Doan and NC State. Oh, well, nah. That would be nice. So, but uh, I, 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 I think that uh, Florida State, uh, I think that they have to have that type of season in order to keep the momentum off uh, uh, on the trail. So, um, I, I, I don't see, I don't, I don't see um, Florida State finishing less than fourth. I think that would be a little bit of a letdown if they finish fourth or fifth in, in, in the division. Nate, in addition to your recruiting expertise, anything you can do when you come on here to walk the fine line between getting me kicked off, but also <laughs> having us go viral. You, if you can walk that line, right. please do. Like bash Dave Dorian some more. Well, I mean, I, I get Mark's dislike for him. Mark is pointing out. I don't have any dislike. No, I no, spit no, facts. No, That's no, what no, I do. That's no, what I do for a living. No, I spit sir. college football facts. That has <laughs> been my calling. Sir, please do not interrupt me, sir. Please uh, don't interrupt me, sir. I get where you're coming from with your dislike of him over his winning percentage and how he doesn't win against – he doesn't win big games, but yet still has a job. It's one in 17 against ranked opponents going into exactly. last year. Nate, where is your venom towards Dave Dorian come from? Um, just interaction with uh, yeah, I I I I know some people who have a lot of interaction with him, who say a lot of negative things about him, and just listen to him in his press conferences. I just he's just an unlikable guy. You know, we we'll, I, I can share some stories, you know, off the record, uh, at, at some other point, but you know, he's just not a likable person. You know who uh, is a likable person is a Mr. G14 classified. This guy yeah. writes some of the best he does. comments. Mark yeah. Rogers is more than a voice. He's a movement. Uh, he had one before that. Uh, he's basically started the T-shirt drive. He knows something I don't know. Well, we, which will we get first, T-shirts from you or the bracelets from Logan? Mm. What about if you got a bracelet and a hat from me? Would that change a lot? I, I'd, rock, I'd rock them right now. I'd be the honor. Well, Logan. I, well what, what about a 55 to 3 prediction t shirt? That's a hot prediction right there. But I'm going to <laughs> get the 3 and 6 Mafia shirt with a picture of, uh, of Norvell with the, the cornrows in it. Now, if you thought that was a hot take, stay tuned for next week's hot take because my hot take next week are what two coaches in the ACC get fired after the season? Spoiler alert Mike Norvell is not one of them. Oh. Man, well, they can't afford it. That's why. Well, Dino that's Babers is one. One of the reasons why, but yes. Yeah. Neighbor. Yeah, Babers Dang. has to be one, two, three, four, five, and six on that list. Okay, you got to let them stay tuned next next week, July seventh, our next appearance. Right, heard, 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 heard. <laughs> I, promise. I promise you will have your tip. 
Um, we're, we're nearing 75. Oh, we did hit 75 right you, before seven. That is true. Shotgun a beer. I'm going to go find one. I'm going to see. Maybe my roommate will let me drink one of his. I, I think I ran through this, but I do. We got to celebrate that. that. That has been like three weeks. We've gotten to like 74. So go. no, Logan, stay with us here. Next week, Logan will start the show by shotgunning a beer. Tune in. Oh, so I have to wait? Week, Logan, well, you're going to shotgun a beer anyway. But you're, Next week, Logan will shotgun a beer on air. Stay tuned. Oh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I just remembered. I got the cooler outside. Give me a second. I will have, in the meantime, I will have Jason address the comment on the screen. I think Mark Rogers is a true college football fan. I think he has teams he roots for. Obviously, he is he's a, a unabashed Ohio State fan. He's a fan of Ohio State. He is a fighting Kent State Gold Flash. So he, he represents the Gold Flashes and the Buckeyes. I think that... I don't think he dislikes Florida State. I think he just wants to. We did it. Hold up. Possibly can. So, no, I don't think Mark Rogers is a Florida State fan, but I also don't think he's a Miami fan or anyone else. Really? We're going Natty Light style? Look at it. Look at it. I had to do it. It was a pool day with the boys this weekend. (laughs) This is like so warm, it's unimaginable. Do it. I I, I think that Mark Rogers knows that college football is better with Florida State, is is, is amongst the best in the country. So let's take a moment real quick and let's let Logan shotgun this beer. Folks, We've got to do it. Folks, for those of you who've never been to school in, in Tallahassee or any other college town. This is yeah. all we do. This yeah. is all we yeah. do. This is what we did. Let's do it. Look at that. Look at him. He's shotgunning it. He's about to ruin all his equipment just to shotgun a natural light. Not even a cold natural light. A lukewarm natural light. I Cheers. hate that it just poured all over me. Yeah, we, we got to go uh... – <laughs> yeah, cool. on this. Ladies and this gentlemen, this is for 75 likes. This is 75 likes. Ladies and gentlemen, Lahayam Mazeltov, do it up big. Thank you, Jason, as always. <laughs> Live television, ladies and gentlemen. Live television. It gets no better than that. Before we go, I do actually. Uh, do you feel better? Wow. No, I feel awful. Okay, good. That might have been Wait. the longest shotgun in the history of shotgun. <laughs> oh, eat a bag. <laughs> it, I lost most of it on my uh, whenever I freaking opened it. Before we before we go, I do actually want to end this week on a uh, somewhat serious note. Um, and this goes to everyone across the state who's watching across the country. Obviously, by now everyone knows the tragedy we had here in Miami-Dade County last last Thursday with the condo collapse here in South Florida to all of you from across the state who've sent down supplies and down crews. There was a crew that came from Tallahassee that left today crews that left from the Tampa area that came down. Everyone who's helping out in South Florida, South Florida appreciates it. It's going to be a long while before everything gets back to normal. It's a very tragic situation. And for those of you who've given your thoughts and prayers and everything to South Florida, all the teams, the Dolphins, the Heat, the Marlins, the Panthers, even I know we make fun of them, but the Miami Hurricanes, they participated and helped out in giving in giving food, water, and whatnot to first responders. Everyone, thank you very much. It's it's a very trying time, but guys, we will get through it. So thank you guys, everyone across the state, for your support. Yep. Well stated, Jason. Thank you so much for uh, closing with that a note of humanity, because that is very important beyond football. Nate, thanks for joining us and providing the knowledge, sir. Hey, you know, anytime, I appreciate coming on here. It's uh, it's a good time. Tune, tune in next week to see if Dean's Wi-Fi lasts the entire sixty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will. I think it will. Logan, one more shot. Let people know where they can find you guys and uh, what you guys have working there at uh, Noel Game Day. Uh, like Jason always loves to hear me say, the Discord is rocking right now. Nate and also Dustin have <laughs> been going nonstop, putting in commitment predictions. We're tweeting out, this is the time to join. Recruiting is going crazy right now. The fun part about it is that Florida State's doing a very good job at it. We're not just kind of saying, oh, here's a few commits here and there. These are some talented guys. But Nate and Dustin have been talking to these guys over – some of these guys over a year, two years. They've been covering their recruitments, and they're putting inside – all the inside scoop they have. Sometimes it's not even in, inside scoop from the interview from that guy alone. That guy's giving some scoop on another dude. So 
go make sure you guys get in there. It's patreon.com slash Noel Game Day. You join a chat with over 400 over 400 FSU fans that love talking recruiting, football, basketball, NFL, hockey, golf, everything. So if you guys want to go join that, patreon.com slash Noel Game Day. And then we're just doing shows and YouTube for the next couple months. Maybe Sweet. We'll- Maybe once the tragedy dies down in Surfside and, and we start to get back to a little bit normal down there, maybe I'll start a Discord with NBCMiami.com. Yeah, I think you should. Maybe I should. We are done for another